venerable religious and dear parishioners, in this short excerpt from Ephesians, St. Paul touches upon three commandments. And that's what I would like to talk about. The fifth commandment, the seventh commandment, and the eighth commandment, because St. Paul refers to all three of them. And this is not something that's often spoken about, but definitely part of the law of God that we want to and need to keep. So we see Saint, we hear St. Paul saying, be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down upon your anger. That's the, that comes into the fifth commandment. He says, he who was wont to steal, let him steal no longer, rather let him labor. That comes under the seventh commandment. And then the eighth commandment is a little bit earlier in this extract. Put away lying and speak truth, each one with his neighbor, because we are members of one another. So in order, let's go through these three commandments as a refresher. Be angry and sin not. That's a tough one. Because we have the normal inclination to anger when we are frustrated. What's frustration? When something's going on around us that does not, or that goes against what we are feeling or what we want to happen. And sometimes you can just feel that frustration grow and grow. And sometimes things can be changed, but sometimes they can't be. So when they can't be changed, we have to learn to accept frustration. And if we don't, then anger takes over. Now, it's a normal emotion to have. The feeling itself is not a sin. This is why St. Paul says, be angry. In other words, you're going to feel this from time to time, but don't sin with that anger. So when does anger become a sin? We go to the catechism. This is the Baltimore Catechism number three. Father O'Connell, he asks the question, what does the fifth commandment forbid? It forbids murder and suicide and also fighting, anger, hatred, revenge, drunkenness, and bad example. <laughs> and obviously we're not going to talk about the other sins. We want to just focus on anger today. And he says, unjust anger leads to hatred, revenge, fighting, and other grave sins. So, as it's been put very well, anger is one letter short of danger. Put a D in front of anger, and what do you get? Danger. And you look at some very, very terrible things that have happened in people's lives, maybe even in our lives, when somebody let the anger get out of control. So when we recognize that it's not something we can change, we have to realize that God's allowing this to test our patience. He's allowing this to, as an opportunity to grow in virtue. And one of the most important things I could suggest to you is when you're dealing with a frustration that you can't you know, that you're having a real hard time handling, keep saying over and over again, Jesus, meek and humble of heart, make my heart like unto thine. Jesus, meek and humble of heart, make my heart like unto thine. Just keep saying it devoutly. Don't even have to verbalize it, but at least in your mind, say it. And our Lord understands. He knows what you're going through. He will give you that help to practice patience. You know, there's that saying, we pray for patience, and then God sends us opportunities for patience. There's no patience, that we can't grow in the virtue of patience without having these frustrating circumstances happen. And God allows them in our lives. We all have them. It reminds me, and this of a little story here, and I, I, it's one of my favorite angel guardian stories. 
about a monk who had to walk a big, big distance every day to fetch water for the monastery. And after weeks and months of doing this, he was getting tired of having to walk so far. He, it was a frustration. Why do I have to walk this far? So he asked the father abbot, may we please dig a well closer to the monastery? Father abbot says, let's do it. But until that well was dug, he still had to trudge the distance every day to get water for the monastery. And he's just counting down the days till that new well is ready so he won't have to go so far. But one day he's walking with, with the pails, heavy pails of water across his shoulder, you know, carrying them on a bar across his shoulder, and, and he hears somebody counting behind him. And he turns around and, and he sees his guardian angel. And he asks him, Holy guardian angel, what are you doing? And the angel guardian says, I am counting all of the steps of merit that you are going to lose when the new well is dug. Then the angel disappeared. And so the monk ran to the father abbot as soon as he could. He says, Father abbot, let's not dig the well. I'm not saying that we should never progress, but I think the point of the matter is you can't get rid of all frustration out of your life. And don't work too hard to try to get rid of all that frustration because you are going to lose out on all the merit that you could gain by dealing with that. Smiling, even though you feel like saying something untoward or improper or venting. See it as an opportunity. See it as a a time to become more like Christ, like our Blessed Mother. And yes, they had frustrations. That's part of being human, but they bore them in the right way. And one more last point about this is do not let the sun go down on your anger. St. Paul's giving us a very wise piece of advice. Don't let anger carry over to the next day and the next day and the next day. Forgive and forget. Not easy to do. But again, this is how we grow in holiness. By becoming more patient, more resigned to the things that can't be changed. But courage, of course, if things need to be changed... But accept these things and just as the sand in the oyster irritates the oyster and keeps on irritating it, the oyster is growing around every piece of sand, a beautiful pearl. And that's what's happening in our souls when we deal with things in in a patient, resigned manner. Um... The other two commandments, he who is wont to steal, let him steal no longer. What do we do there? We respect other people's property. We do not take even something small. If it, doesn't, if it belongs to someone else, we respect it. Let's examine our conscience to see if we have just lifted things from others or places of work and just didn't think very much about it. It was there, we took it. But if it belongs to somebody, we violated the seventh commandment and it needs to be returned. We're not allowed to keep ill-gotten property or if we've deliberately damaged or through negligence allowed somebody's property to be damaged, we have to make up for that. We have to make restitution. For the sin to be forgiven, the restitution has to be made. Or if one doesn't have the money, at least the promise to pay as soon as possible. You have to pay one's just debts. It all comes under the seventh commandment.
And finally, the eighth commandment, put away lying and speak truth, each one with his neighbor. I think Paul, St. Paul puts a very beautiful phrase in there, because we are members of one another. We, we belong to the same church. We're Catholics. But even if we weren't Catholics, even common sense tells us, the, the, ten, the natural law tells us, it's wrong to tell a lie to somebody. We're never allowed to tell an outright lie. Even the white lie that gives us some kind of inconvenience or advantage, it's still a sin. And so often when a lie gets exposed later on, you find out that all the trust has been destroyed. And it's the fault of the person who told the lie. I remember in the, it was in the late 50s, I mean, this is just an example of what not to do, but uh, one of our government operations was to, was to uh, you know, to send the spy planes over Russia. I'm not saying that's necessarily wrong. I think you, you, uh, we have the right to know what enemies are, are going to be doing. But the problem that comes in is we lied about it. Our official position is there is no such thing going on. It's not happening. And then when the U-2 spy plane was shot down, the Russians showed the whole world, see, the government of the U.S. was lying to us. So, so often you pay the price. And it destroys trust. You know, when you've been lied to, that other person now has to build up trust where they will not tell the a lie again. But most of all, remember, this is a sin against God. And I'd like to end on this final point. You know, we hear these thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt not. Let's remember our Catholic faith is never just about the thou shalt not. Our Catholic faith, the Christianity, is especially about thou shalt love the Lord thy God. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. So even though we hear these, thou shalt not, let's never reduce our faith just to that negative aspect. Our faith is the most positive thing. How can I love God better with my whole heart, mind, soul, and strength? How can I love my neighbor better? So let us uh, heed these wonderful words of St. Paul. Again, he teaches us, about loving Christ with whom he was head and over heels in love with himself and just couldn't say enough and do enough for Jesus who had done so much for him. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, amen.